Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome as you join us for this act of worship on the seventh Sunday after Trinity. As members together of the body of Christ, we gather with Christians throughout the world to lift our hearts in praise and prayer to Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. O oh, Lord our God, how great is your name in all the world. Let us pray. We keep a moment of silence as we remember our need for God's love and forgiveness. 
Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Seventh Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is from St Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words, and God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together verses from Psalm 119. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The opening of your word gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. 
I open my mouth and draw in my breath as I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your way with those who love your name. Order my steps by your word and let no wickedness have dominion over me. Redeem me from earthly oppressors so that I may keep your commandments. Show the light of your countenance upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes run down with streams of water because the wicked do not keep your law. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had 
and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. Your word, O Lord, is a lantern to our feet and a light to our path. Amen. So we have a rich diet of parables in today's Gospel. Five of them in all, one after the other in rapid succession, as if Jesus is searching for images to describe what is, in effect, impossible to pin down. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, like yeast, like treasure, like a fine pearl, like a net full of fish. It's a bit like a match sparking into flame. As these images play in our minds, our own imaginations spark into life and provide further pictures of what the kingdom of heaven is like for us. Interestingly, it is only Matthew who uses the words kingdom of heaven. Mark and Luke, in their telling of the parables, prefer the phrase the kingdom of God is like. All three gospel writers suggest that the kingdom was a vital aspect of Jesus's teaching and something he was passionate to convey, that God's presence and life is around and within us if only we have eyes to see and ears to hear. It's alongside us. It's transformational. It is of immense value and worth. And, as always when Jesus talks about God, it concerns not only external reality, God's desire for a world of justice, equality, truth and peace, but also internal reality, the very foundation of our personal existence and our source of life. As the Reverend Lucy Winkett said in a recent Radio 4 service of Sunday worship, the kingdom of God was a constant theme of Jesus's. It's close at hand, it's within you, it's nearby, it's already here. This kingdom of God is an invitation to live in a way that's both beautiful and just. Mutual, dynamic, interdependent with all that lives, it is a mirror of the Trinitarian life that is rooted and grounded in mutual love. Take the two parables about the treasure in the field and the fine pearl, for example. The Christian spiritual tradition makes clear that within, within each of us there is an inner reality which is like a great treasure lying hidden within the field of our interior life, waiting to be discovered and owned. Part of our Christian pilgrimage is to make that joyful discovery and come to the realisation for ourselves that, as St Paul affirms, Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. The kingdom of God is within you. The second parable has a different emphasis. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. In this case, we are the pearls, the treasure found by the kingdom of God. So, when the divine life at the centre of our being, rooted in the kingdom, 
is connected with the presence of God searching to find us, we come to know we are infinitely precious in God's sight. For seed rooted in good soil, as the reading from Matthew's Gospel reminded us a couple of weeks ago, bears fruit, thirtyfold, sixtyfold and a hundredfold. But what of those days, those periods in our life, when the assurance and presence of the kingdom of heaven seems but an idle tale, hard to believe or to trust? When the cares and toil and distractions of life take over, building up layer upon niggling layer of anxieties and concerns which make it hard for us to see signs of God's presence and life among us, and which move us further away from our life source. Or, as last week's Gospel reminded us, when the tares and weeds of life grow up among the healthy crop. In a similar vein, the fifth parable is about the net full of fish, both good and bad, which were sorted into those which could be kept and those which were disposed of. For God's kingdom is about bringing life, and that which does not bring life has no place there. It is then that we have some work to do, work which involves actively turning back to God, expressed in the New Testament as metanoia, changing direction, making sure we are God-centred and not self-centred. Repent, says Jesus at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, turn around, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. God's kingdom, life, love, are all nearby, all waiting to welcome you. It was when the prodigal son turned around and went home that he found his father waiting for him with outstretched arms. So the kingdom of heaven, God's presence and life, is something that often has the smallest and most inconspicuous of beginnings. A mustard seed, yeast, the child within Mary's womb, and yet given the right conditions, is transformational in its growth and effect. The tiny seed in the right soil becomes a tree, roots, trunk, branches, leaves. The yeast, correctly used, transforms flour and water into bread. Mary's child, through an outpouring of love, becomes the saviour of the world. We must remember that our own Christian life and pilgrimage, small and imperfect though it seems, carries also the potential and promise of something beyond ourselves and the possibility of making that known to others by the way we try to live our lives in God's service. Each of us, as a scribe trained for the kingdom of heaven, is uniquely gifted to bring out from our treasure what is new and what is old, ways both fresh and well-tested of shaping our own lives and actions so that they speak of God's presence. St Paul reminds us that we are able to do this because the Spirit helps us in our weakness and because God is for us, calling us into God's large family, where we find that the kingdom of heaven is at work in all our lives. Amen.
Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, we come to you. Lord of all, our Saviour be, come to us and to heal with the light of your love. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have promised that when two or three people meet together in your name, you will hear their prayers. When we come together in this church building to confess our faults and weaknesses, to worship you and to share our wonder at your creation, we pray for the spiritual life of our own local community. You gave your disciples a new commandment to love one another so help us now to share that spirit of love and compassion to all we meet in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and loving Father, we pray that you will continue to keep us safe under the protection of your love and mercy as the country slowly emerges from the restrictions imposed during the height of the virus pandemic. We pray for wisdom and integrity for all those in positions of leadership and pray that they will act responsibly in balancing the promise of increased freedom of travel and the risks of further outbreaks of the virus. Open our hearts and minds to the awareness that we are all members of your family and that we share the responsibility to offer help and support to those in greatest need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Creator, you loved the world so much that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our humanity, to forgive our sins and weaknesses, and to experience fully the physical beauty of your creation. Help us to care for your natural world and for the full variety of creatures who inhabit this earth, either on land, sea or air. Save us from the sins of greed and indifference that prevent us from seeing the damage that we do to our environment and to our neighbours across the world. Help us to offer the expectation of the beauty and hope of each new morning to those whose lives may seem to have no purpose and grant them the grace and wisdom to understand their part in your design for our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous and loving Father, we pray for those known to us who are sick in body, mind or spirit or whose lives are under great stress and anxiety at this time. Guide us to listen with compassion and patience to those who are confused or anxious and have asked for our help. We give heartfelt thanks for the network of people who keep in touch with local families who are vulnerable, the elderly, the housebound and those needing extra care. We pray for those names mentioned on our weekly intercession list because of ill health or frailty. And we offer our love and support for those families mourning the death of relatives or friends. Rejoicing now and always in the fellowship of Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and the whole of your creation to your 
unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord of life, we come to you. Lord of all, our Saviour be, come to bless and to heal with the light of your love. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.